We start the next talk. It's by Martin Vigo, he stands here. He is a product security lead and researcher, and he's responsible for mobile security, identity, and authentication. So he helps people design and secure systems and applications, and he has worked on stuff like breaking password managers or exploiting Apple's FaceTime to create a spy uh, yeah, a spy program. So give him a warm applause for his talk. Thank you for joining me in this talk. I'm super excited to be here. It's actually my second year at the conference, so super, super excited that uh, the first year I was sitting there, and this second year I'm sitting here. Uh, this is me, but the introduction was already made, just pointing out that uh, this is me, nine years old, with an Amstrad CPC 6128. Who had this machine before? I see only one hand. I think this was sold in Europe, but uh, I was playing here La Badia del Crimen, which is the best video game ever written. If you guys like Abandonware, you should definitely check it out. So like any good research, uh, we have to start by looking at previous art, right? We, we, we can learn a lot from researchers that did stuff in the past. And in this case, I went all the way back uh, to the 80s to understand how uh, freakers at the time when the hacking thing started uh, were doing to actually hack into voicemail systems. I condensed everything I learned in five different uh, paragraphs of five different uh, essays that I actually got from FRAC uh, website, which is an amazing resource. So here, uh, from the hacking telephone answering machines, where the paragraph that I extracted was that uh, you can just enter all two-digit combinations until you get the right one. A more sophisticated and fast way to do this is to take advantage of the fact that such machines typically do not read two numbers at a time and discard them by just look for the correct sequence. What is this about? In older voicemail systems, if you will enter like one, two, three, four for a two, two digit ping, it will not process one, two, and three, four to, to verify the ping, but it will also process two, three, which is very interesting. In fact, in hacking AT&T answering machines, again, this is amazing from the 90s or 80s, uh, we actually get the correct sequence to cover the entire two-digit key space. So if you enter all this, you're basically brute forcing the entire key space without having to enter in the entire uh, thing that covers, that covers it. Uh, I also learned from a tutorial of asking voicemail systems that in the 80s there was default password. Surprise, surprise. But also that as humans, we actually have patterns when we choose pins. And so we have the classics 1111, 9999, 1234. And another thing that I learned in hacking answering machines in the 90s was that there is also they all changed the message secret to make it say something to the effect of this line accepts all toll charges so you can build third parties calls to that number. This is basically a trick used by inmates to get uh, free calls. Basically, they will record in the voicemail a uh, greeting message, yes, yes, yes. So when the automated system comes in and asks, do you want to accept the toll charges from the call from the penitentiary? It will go and they will be able to do free calls. So condensing everything and summarizing what, we, what I learned from looking at what previous uh, hackers did in the 80s, uh, we know that the voicemail system security in the 80s looked like the, there was default pins, there was common pins, there was brute forcible pins. There was efficient brute forcing because we can enter multiple pins at the same time, and that the greeting message is actually an attack vector. So let's play a game, let's do checklist, and let's look at the voicemail security today. So uh, I looked at the, at the American carriers because I live in the US, but because I was invited to, to talk in Germany, I, I took some friends to give me some SIM cards and uh, I actually wanted to put about German carriers as well. So checklist time, default pins. Uh, all American carriers do have default pins and unfortunately they are really not a secret because most of them is actually the last digits of your phone number. When it comes to, the, to German carriers, it's actually a much better state. For example, Vodafone is the last four digits of their client number, which you don't know. I mean, you know as the customer, not others, it's a secret. Or if it comes to the Kolya, that, that is the card that I got, it's the last four digits of the POC. Uh, for telecom, it's the last four digits of the card number, which is the card you get with the SIM card. For O2, unfortunately, there is a default pin, which is 8705, which is the only pin you can set when you choose to set one. 
Yeah. So voicemail security today when it comes to common pins. Th according to like a fantastic research from data genetics, this is actually about people choosing pins for their credit cards. But uh, there was a lot of conclusions that I learned from this research. And basically, to summarize the most important regarding this work is that, for example, by trying the top 20 most common pins, you have a 22% chance of guessing the right one. What this means, in other words, is for every fourth victim that I try to brute force the, the ping from their voicemail system, I will get it right every fourth person. There are other conclusions that are very interesting, like the pins mostly start by one nine. Who has an idea why is that? Birth year, right? It's very common to set as the, as your birth year, and most of us were born in the, in the 20th century, um, to set it as a pin. Brute forcible pins, same thing. German, in Germany and the, in the US, it accepts four digit pins, which we will see later is just not enough key space. Efficient brute forcing, all the carriers accept concatenation of payloads. So in this case, I use it to, to try different pins, and I don't even have to wait for error messages. I just use the pound as kind of like an enter in a voicemail system, and I can try three pins at a time. Usually, carriers will hang up when you enter three pins wrong for security purposes, but we will take advantage of that. So with everything that I learned from the 80s, I verified that it was still a problem today. I decided to write a tool that allows you to root for a voicemail system fast, cheap, easily, efficiently, and undetected. So fast, I use Twilio. Who is familiar with Twilio here? Some of you. So uh, Twilio is basically an online service that allows you to programmatically interact with phone calls. You can make phone calls, interact with them, and all that. So I use it to launch hundreds and hundreds of calls at the same time in order to brute force pins. It's cheap. The entire four-digit key space costs $40. So if I want to have a 100% chance of guessing your four-digit pin, I only have to pay 40 bucks. A 50% chance, according to the research from data genetics, it will cost me $5. So one every two victim, I will get the pain. Actually, if I want to take a different approach, and instead of just trying to brute force only yours, but I want to brute force the pin from everyone here, according to data genetics, and in this case, according to the fact that there is default pins, I'm not going to ask how many of you have an O2, now that they know there is a default pin to their very small system, but uh, it will be more interesting to actually try a thousand phone numbers for that default pin for O2 customers only for $13. It's easy, fully automated. The tool does everything for you. You just have to provide the victim number, the carrier, and a couple other parameters. And it's sufficient. It optimizes brute forcing. I use the research uh, from data genetics to favor the pins that are most common. And obviously, it tries different pins and all that stuff. But the most important here is detection. Because think about it. In order for me to interact with your voicemail system, I need to call you, and you cannot uh, pick up. Because if not, it doesn't go to the voicemail system. So I was trying to find ways, because I need to, in the end, make a lot of calls, uh, trying different pins. How can I interact directly with your voicemail? I, I try call flooding, like basically doing three calls at a time. And because the line gets flooded just with three calls, it goes directly to the voicemail. But it wasn't very reliable. You can use uh, OSINT techniques. A lot of people like to tweet that they, you know, they go on a trip, they are about to board a plane, so it goes into airplane mode, or you go in a remote area, or you are in a movie theater, or at night you put it at do not disturb. Those are all situations in which calls go directly to the voicemail. You can use HLR database to find out if mobile devices are disconnected, or, don't, or the SIM cards have been discarded, but they are still assigned to an account. And you can use online services like realphonevalidation.com, which I actually reached out, and they provide services that allow you to know if a phone is actually connected to a tower at the moment, so it's basically available, so you could use that too. Uh, you can also use Class Zero SMS, which gives you feedback. It's, a, it's basically a type of SMS that uh, it, will, it has more priority and it will basically display on the screen, and you get the feedback if it was displayed. So that's a nice trick to find out if the phone is actually connected to a tower. Uh, but in reality, I wanted a bulletproof way to do this. And in the US, I found that there is this concept of backdoor voicemail systems. So instead of me calling you, I'm going to call one of these services that you guys have listed here for every carrier. And there, I enter the, the number, in this case, the number of the victim, from the voicemail I want to interact to. And of course, it allows you to access to the login prompt. 
Actually, in Germany, I found it interesting that you guys have it as a, like, as a service, because in the US, it's more a secret that I, I had to find using Google. But here, basically, if I dial your phone number, and when it comes to Vodafone, between the area code and the rest of the number I put 55, or for Telecom 13, or for 0233, I directly go to the voicemail. It won't ring your phone. So I can use that. Who was aware of this that is from Germany? OK, many of you. So that's, that's what I thought. Like, here is not really like something you guys care too much about. In the US, this is actually used a lot for scammers or to leave directly voicemail uh, messages from spammers as well. So voicemail cracker actually takes advantage of backdoor numbers, so it allows you to be undetected. I don't need to call you. I don't need to wait till you are offline. I can do that. And for example, for the US, it's great, because when I'm launching that many calls, the line gets flooded even if you are offline. But when I use these backdoor voicemail systems, because they are meant to be used by everyone, that, 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 those don't get, um, don't get flooded. So I literally make hundreds and hundreds of calls, and it never fails. So, but, you know, like carriers, some of them uh, add a brute force protections, right? So that you can't actually launch brute forcing attacks. And I, I, I looked at the German carriers, and for example, Vodafone, I saw that it resets the six digit ping and sends it over SMS. So I guess I can flood your phone with text, but who cares? That's not a big deal. But I think it's actually a pretty effective measure against, uh, voice uh, against brute forcing. Telecom blocks the caller ID from accessing the mailbox or even leaving messages. I tried, and after six times that it's wrong, every time I call, it says, hey, you, you can't do anything, and it hangs up. And for O2, it connects directly to the customer helpline. Uh, someone sp started to talk in German, and my German is not that good. So. Uh, Brute force, I, I wanted to be able to bypass this, right? And, and so if you look at telecom, I mentioned that it blocks the caller ID. But it turns out that Twilio, you can actually buy caller IDs. You can, well, you can buy phone numbers, right? And they are really cheap. So it's very easy for me to do randomization of caller IDs for very, very cheap and bypass telecom's brute force protection. So voicemail cracker also supports that. It supports caller ID randomization. So let's make the first demo. So as you can see here on the left is, is uh, the victim's mobile device. And on the right is the tool. And I, in this case, I'm going to use the brute force option. The brute force option allows me to basically brute force the ping. It, may, it makes hundreds of calls, as I explained, and we'll try to guess it. And there is a number of parameters, like the victim number, the carrier. The carrier is important because I put there a specific payloads for every single carrier, because all the voicemail systems are different how you interact with them. And in this case, I'm using a backdoor number because it's more efficient, and then there is no detection. And in this case, I did the option of top pings. So this is basically trying the top 20 pings, according to the research, uh, for four digits. So and as you can see, it's trying actually three pings at a time, as I mentioned before, rather than one. So we have to do a third of the, of the, of the calls, right? And how do you think that I am detecting if the ping was correct or not? Any ideas? OK, so the disconnect and, and hang up, that's what I heard. And that's exactly right. If you think about it, I can look at the call duration. Because when I try three pings and it hangs up, it's always the same call duration. I mean, for T-Mobile, in this case, it's like uh, 18 seconds. So I instruct Twilio to, after dialing and putting the payload to interact with the voicemail system, trying the pins, to wait 10 extra seconds. So all I got to do, I don't need any sound processing to try to guess what the voicemail voice is telling me if it's correct or not. I just use the call duration. So if the call duration is 10 times longer, then I know that's the right pin because, because it locked in. So as you can see, it found that one of those three is actually the correct one. In this case, it's 1983. So in order to give you the exact one, because at that time it tried the three of them, now it's trying one by one. And it may look like it, it's taking longer than, than it should for only 20 pins. But remember, failing pins is very, very quick. It's just that because in the top 20 found already the right pin, it takes longer than it should. And there you go. We got that it's a 1983. Awesome. So, what is the impact, really? Why am I here talking to you at CCC that has such amazing talks, right? And this is really the, this is really the thing about this. No one cares about the voicemail. Probably if I ask here, who, who knows his own uh, voicemail ping? <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's what I was expecting. Probably less hands, even. So some of them are lying. But uh, 
That's the thing, right? We don't care about the voicemail. We don't even use it, which is the, the, the crazy thing here. We have, it, we have an open door for a, that, that discussing an issue that we don't even know about or we don't even remember. So many people is not familiar with the fact that you can uh, reset passwords over phone call. We are familiar with resetting passwords over email. You get a unique link. Maybe over SMS, you get a code that you, that you then have to enter in the UI. But a lot of people cannot receive SMS, or that's what services claim. So they allow you to provide that temporary code over a phone call. And that's exactly what we take advantage of. Because I ask you, what, what happens if you don't pick up the phone? If basically I go to a service, enter your email or your phone number, and reset a password, Everyone can do that. You can, anyone can reset, start to initiate the reset password process. And I know that you are not going to pick up the phone. And I know that thanks to my tool, I got access to your voicemail system. So basically, the voicemail system will pick up the call, and it will start recording. So it will record the, the voice spelling out the code that I need to basically reset your account and, and, and get access to it. So oops, let me press play here. OK, so what does the attack vector look like? You brute force the voicemail system using the tool, ideally using backdoor numbers. For that particular call, that is the call that the victim will receive once you initiate the password reset, that one, it cannot go through the backdoor number, right? Because it's going to, PayPal is going to directly call the victim. So for that one, you need to make sure that the victim is not connected to a tower through, the med through all the methods that I showed before. You start the password reset process using the call me feature. You listen to the recorded message, secret code, and profit. You hijack that account. And Voicemail Cracker can do all that for you. Let's compromise WhatsApp. <laughs> so on the left, you see uh, my number, right? With uh, a secret lover group and a secret group and all that stuff. On the right, notice that I'm not even using an actual device. It's an Android emulator that I installed the APK. And, and there is some sound to this. And you are going to see, so uh, again, on your left, it's the victim's number. On the right, it's an emulator of the attacker. So you'll see that I'm going to use my tool with the message payload, with the message option. So in this case, what I'm doing is, I'm setting the victim's uh, phone to airplane mode, simulating that it's now uh, offline for some reason, and I detected that. So if you see WhatsApp allows, sends you a text to actually register as WhatsApp group, right? As a WhatsApp uh, user. But if you don't reply in a minute, it allows you, it gives you an option to call, to call me, right? And that's exactly what I click. So now WhatsApp is basically calling the victim, which is again in airplane mode, because he went on a remote trip or on a plane. And so I'm using voicemail cracker with the option message to automatically retrieve that newest message. So the tool is going to provide me, as you can see, the last option is the pin, because I brute forced it before. So it's going to give me a URL with the recording of the newest message, which hopefully, it's a recorded demo, uh, hopefully contains actually the, the code. So let's see. I got the URL. <laughs> it's interacting New with the voicemail system. Well, your right now. Pacing code is three six I nine one I. Your verification code is three six I. Nine, one, five, and that's simple. We just hijacked a person's WhatsApp. And I hear I'm fast forwarding just to show you that you got actually that. Thank you. I, I do want to point out that WhatsApp is super secure, like, I mean, end to end encryption, all that. And there is a number of things that you can notice this attack. For example, you wouldn't be able to see the previous messages that were there, but you can just hold on. And as people write, the groups will pop up. So you hijack that WhatsApp account. There is also fingerprinting, but who really pays attention with, <laughs> to the fingerprinting when someone changes the device, right? So are we done? Not yet. Because the truth is, uh, some researchers talked about this in the past, and, and actually services tried to slowly pick up. So there is actually something that I found in several services that is what I call the user interaction-based protection. So when you receive that phone call that provides you with the temporary code, in reality, it's not giving it away. You have to press a key. It comes in three different flavors from what I found from my test. Please press any key 
to hear the code. So when you get the call, you have to press, and then it will tell you the code. Please press a random key, so specifically, please press one, please press two, or please enter the code. PayPal does that. Instead of you having to press a key to hear the code, when you reset the password, you will see a four digits code that you have to enter when you receive the call, and then it will reset the password. So I'm going to get the help from all of you guys. Can we be this currently recommended protection, what is nowadays recommended to prevent these kind of attacks? And we're going to play a game. I'm going to give you two hints. This is the first one. So uh, you probably guys are familiar with this, but Captain Crunch, again, we go back to the 80s. We can learn so much from them. Use this to uh, generate specific uh, sounds at a specific frequency to basically, you can go and read it to get free international calls. So he will create that sound, and the system will process it on the, on the line. And the second one is that I cheated. When we did the checklist, I actually skipped one, which was the greeting message is an attack vector. So I ask you guys, how can we bypass the protection that requires user interaction in order to get the code recorded on the voicemail system? What was that? Exactly. Record DTMF tones as the greeting message. We own the voicemail system, so we can alter the greeting message. So this is exactly how it works. We just alter the greeting message, record the DTMF tones that the system is expecting, and it works every single time. The best thing of this is what, what really is so awesome about, about all of us that really care about technology and we want to have a deep understanding. Because when I was asking people when, when you know, I wanted to show them this, I was asking them, how does the, this protection really work? And they would say, well, you have to press a key, and then you know, it will give you the code. But that's not really true. This, what you have to do is to provide a specific sound that the system is expecting. That is different than saying you have to press a key, because if you say, I have to press a key, that requires physical access. If you say, I have to provide a sound, now we know it doesn't require physical access. That is why hackers are so cool, because we really want to understand what is happening backstage, and we take advantage of that. So how does the attack vector look like? Brute force in voicemail systems as before. So basically, we have an extra step, which is update the greeting message according to the account to be hacked. In voicemail, Cracker can do this for you. Let's compromise PayPal. <laughs> so. On the left side, uh, you, saw, you see that, I, as before, I brute forced the, the, the ping of the voicemail. And uh, in this case, on the right side, I'm going to start the password reset for that account. So I do that. And I choose, please call me with a temporary code. But in this case, PayPal works differently because it will show me a four digits code that I need to enter when I receive the call in order to reset the password. So you see that here I'm using the greeting option. So the greeting is going to allow me to enter a payload that I want recorded as the greeting message. In this case, it's 6353. So I made it very verbose for this demo. So it's the, you see the last option is PayPal code. And I enter 6353. And now the tool is going to use the ping to log into the voicemail system, interact with it, change the greeting message, record the DTMF tones according to 6353, and then, uh, and, and then it, it, should, it should be able to fool the, the call. In this case, I'm asking to call again because it didn't have enough time to do that. And in 321, we should get that uh, we actually compromised PayPal's account. And there we go. We can now set our own password. Thank you. <laughs> so I showed you some vulnerable service. Let's go very quick about it, because I'm, I'm concerned I'm running out of time. So I, I'm, I'm just mentioning Alexa top 100 types of services, no favoring anything. But uh, uh, so for password reset, that supports over phone call, PayPal, Instagram. Uh, no, is that? No, Snapchat, <laughs> Netflix, eBay, LinkedIn. I'm still on Facebook, what can I say? Uh, 2FA uh, for all the major four, so 2FA over phone call for Apple, Google, Microsoft, Yahoo. Verification, so basically you don't register with the username and password on, on WhatsApp or Signal. You actually use directly the, the, the phone number, right, as we saw before, and you register through a phone call or SMS. So you can compromise this too. Twilio, the own service that I use for this is actually really cool because <laughs> you can own 
a caller ID by verifying it by getting a phone call. So I can actually own your caller ID and make calls on your behalf, send text, and this all legitimately, right? Because you pressed one. A Google Voice is actually another interesting service because it's used a lot by scammers, right? And this is the same thing. You have to verify ownership so you can do those phone calls, and you can fool it as well with this. But then I found, I, I was looking like, what other services really take advantage of this? And this is super common in San Francisco where I live. Uh, it, you can buzz in people like when they, when they, when they want to enter, right? They enter your, your house number and uh, your phone rings and you press any key to open the door. So we are talking about physical security now. And I've seen this in offices as well. They all work this way. They basically, because they want to be able for tenants that, you know, come and go, be able to switch that very quickly. So it works just through the phone that you ask people in. But my favorite is consent. Because when we think about consent, we think about lawyers, and we think about signing papers, and we think about all these difficult things. And I found out about this location smart service that uh, is, not, is not anymore there, and you will, you will see why. Uh, but this was recently in the news because uh, uh, basically um, uh, Brian Krebs uh, wrote a, a really great article about it. But I'm going to let you hear them, their YouTube channel, how location smart works. The, the screen that you're, that you're showing, that, that you're seeing right now, is, um, is, is a demo that we have on our, web, on our website. It's at locationsmart.com slash pride. And I've entered my name, my email, my mobile phone number. And it's, gonna, it's again going to get my permission by calling my phone, and then it'll locate. So let's go ahead and I click the box to say yes, I agree, click the locate. And the screen now shows that it's going to call my device to get my permission. Mm -hmm. That's a nice ringtone. No, it's not. So as you see, this service, this website had a free demo, had a free demo that allowed you to put a phone number, yours of course, and you will get a phone call, and then you will give permission by pressing one so someone could locate you and keep tracking, I mean, I, I checked with them for up to 30 days real time. So now you know why they don't exist anymore. <laughs> Open source. <laughs> Open source. So, and this was with the permission of the carriers. This is now some fishy thing. This was actually a service. Um, so, uh, I, I, I wanted to release code because I want you guys to verify that what I mentioned is true and have code to hopefully help push the industry forward to make uh, voicemail systems uh, more secure, right? We want to push carriers to do so. Uh, but I didn't want it to provide an, a tool that works off the box and anyone can very easily, as we saw, like just start to brute force pins, especially because I saw that there is so many people with the default pins out there. So I just removed the brute forcing. So the tool allows you to test it on your own. You can test, you know, uh, you can test the greeting message, you can test uh, the retrieving messages, compromising the services and all that. So the tool allows you to test on your own device. I won't give you code to brute for someone else's uh, device. And feel free to go uh, to my GitHub repo. So now, like all the talks, comes the recommendations. But I, I know what you guys are thinking, right? When, when, we, when someone comes with all this paranoia and stuff, you still think, yeah, but you know, still like, no one's going to come after me. I don't have anything to hide or anything like that. So I wanted to give you reasons why you should still care about this and why we need to do better. Because do carriers set default pins? Yes, we saw that. Is testing for default pins cheap, fast, undetected, and automatable? Yes, it is. Is updating reading the message automatable? Yes, it is. Is retrieving new, the newest message automatable? Yes, it is. Is there a speech-to-text description? so that I can get the sound that I play before with the code and get it in text? Yeah, Twilio gives you that as well. <laughs> so can the account compromise process be automatable? Of course, you can use Selenium if you want to automate the UI, or you can just look in, use a web proxy and look at the APIs and do it yourself. So it is only a matter of time 
that someone actually does all these steps that I showed you step by step and just makes it all straight and starts to go over phone numbers, trying the default pins, and just automatically compromising services like WhatsApp, like PayPal, and all that. You can, auto, you can do basically, not a worm, but you, know, you can compromise a lot of devices without doing anything. Recommendations for online services. Don't use automated calls for security purposes. If not possible, detect answering machines and fail. I mean, this is not very accurate, and you can still trick it. Uh, but um, require user interaction before providing the secret. I just show you how to bypass that, but that's with the hope that carriers ban DTMF tons from, uh, from uh, the greeting message. I don't see why the, that should be supported, right? Recommendations for carriers, the most important thing. Ban the DTMF tones from the greeting message, eliminate backdoor mobile services, or at least uh, give no access to the login prompt, right? There is no reason why you should be able to access your voicemail directly to leave a message, but then I can access the login prompt by pressing start. Voicemail disabled by default, this is very important and can only be activated from the actual phone or online, maybe with a special code. Oh, great, so I have uh, time for questions. Uh, no default pins, uh, learn from the German carriers. Uh, don't allow common pins, detect and prevent brute force attempts. Uh, don't process multiple pins at once. Recommendations for you, which is in the end uh, very important here. Disable the voicemail if you don't use it. Uh, I found though that some carriers, you're still through the backdoor voicemail numbers, you are able to activate it again, so it kind of sucks. Uh, or, so I guess use the longest possible random pin. Don't provide phone numbers to online services unless required, or it's the only way to get 2FA. 2FA is more important. Use a virtual number to prevent us in like a Google Voice uh, number, so no one can you know, learn about your uh, phone number digits by resetting the password or do SIM swapping. Use 2FA apps only, and I always like to finish my talk with one slide that kind of summarizes everything. Automated phone calls are a common solution for password reset, 2FA verification, and other services. This can be compromised by leveraging all weaknesses in current technology to exploit the weakest link voicemail systems. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sean. CCC. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Martin. We have time for questions. So if you have any questions, or if someone in the internet has questions, just go to these uh, microphones. Uh, where is the microphone? You've got it. Uh, yes, uh, you were black in the microphone too. So uh, maybe you start, and we take the question from the internet. Um, yes, I have a question. Um, you mentioned that the phone needed to be offline. Mm -hmm. Would a call, uh, like a simultaneous call to the phone, that it would be um, in a, uh, what's, what's it called in English, uh, bezet, like um, occupied? So let's say I already called the uh, victim. So the uh, caller gets, uh, yeah, the line is occupied. It would then go to voicemail, wouldn't it? So that's a great question. I think the question is, if you are on a, on a call and someone else calls, calls you, so your attack will be, I somehow make up a story to keep the person on the phone call while I launch other calls. That will work. I tried that. But the problem is usually to force, I mean, that wouldn't be too big of a deal, I guess. But it supports two calls, right? It will warn you, oh, there is another incoming call. But I guess you could keep doing more. So that's what I meant uh, partly with the uh, call flooding. In the case, what I tried was just launching all of them at the same time. And if the person picks up, I don't care. But it's somewhat related to what you mentioned. And that's definitely possible. OK, thank you. Yeah. Question from the internet, please. Uh, don't ask for the phone calls start talking immediately. Would would the uh, new code be recorded then? Uh, if I understood the question correctly, is that uh, when the voicemail picks up, like basically the automated system that spills out the code uh, already started to talk. I believe that's the question. We don't know it's from the internet. Oh, OK. So if that is <laughs> the question, so. I found actually that, because usually greeting messages are last like 15 seconds. So by the time it starts recording, you it already finished uh, the, the recording that gives you the code. But you own the greeting message, so you make it sh as short as one second. And I never found a problem with that. I, you actually record the DTMF tones for like two seconds. Ladies first, so we take your question. Uh, you talked about um, how you learned all of that 
through reading um, e e scenes. Uh, um, um, how are they called and how do I find them? That's the best question I've ever heard. It deserves an applause. Seriously. <laughs> I like that because you also want to learn about it. So that's, that's really fantastic. So the FRAC website is the best resource you can get. I guess everyone will agree here. So uh, just look up Google for FRAC magazine. And uh, there is a lot, a lot of interesting stuff that we can learn there still today. Um, are there any others? Yeah, I mean, you, you can then follow the classic. Uh, I mean, I, I like Twitter to get my security news because it's very concise. So I kind of get like, you know, the 140 characters version. If, if I'm interested, uh, then I will, I will read it. So I think you can Google for like top security people to follow. Uh, Brian Krebs is, is great. Uh, it depends also on your technical depth. Uh, there is different uh, people for that. And if not, just, uh, you know, specialized blogs and magazines. Okay, all right. Thanks. Thank you. And your question, please. Hi. Um, so for me, the solution is obvious. I just turn off my voicemail. But thinking about some relatives which are maybe too lazy or don't really care and still use two-factor authentication, I was thinking about could I easily adapt your script to automatically turn off voice boxes <laughs> or, or generate random pins? <laughs> <laughs> You can automate it to turn off the ping, like for example on Vodafone. I don't know why it allows you to turn off the ping. Uh, to turn off the voicemail, I don't. I haven't tested that. I, I think you may have to call the IT department. But you know what? It would be really great to do that. <laughs> it would be really awesome. Great question. Thank I you. guess if you can turn it off, then you can turn it on as well. But yeah. Your question, please. Uh, did Twilio ban you, or did they find out what you did? What did they I do got some emails. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I got some emails, but uh, they were really cool. I have to say that. Uh, I explained to them where I was coming from. I gave them my identity. Like, I wasn't hiding anything. Actually, I had to pay quite some money because of all the calls that I was doing while I was doing the research. So I didn't hide my identity at all. So they did detect uh, that I was uh, doing many calls and stuff like that. So there is, I guess, at high, high volumes, there is some detection, but Twill is not the only services. So again, you can switch between services, space it out, change color IDs, number of things. And one more question here. Hi. You talked about um, being undetected when making all these calls by going directly to these, to these direct access numbers. Mm -hmm. Well, in Germany, it's very common that if someone um, calls your voicemail, you get an SMS text, even if they don't leave a message. Mm -hmm. But I suspect there's some kind of undocumented API, API to actually turn that off through the menus. Have you looked into that? No, I, I haven't looked into that specifically. The question is that uh, uh, usually in Germany for the carriers, uh, you get an SMS when you, when you get a call. I wonder, what the test that I did on the German carriers, I was getting a text if I was leaving a message, not if someone was calling there. I guess you are talking about a missed call yeah. uh, kind of notification. Uh, I'm not sure about it. What I do want to point out is remember uh, that uh, you can do this while the person is offline, maybe on a long trip. So you can time it. Uh, that will be a good provision, I guess, to just not launch it at any, you know, at any point in time. But uh, you can just always time it. And by the time the person gets a million texts, it's too late. Thanks. Yeah. One more question over here, please. Thank you. Um, on, the, on Apple phones, we can activate with some carrier the uh, what they call visual voicemail. Would that prevent your attack to work? Or no, there is actually a, I believe he was an Australian researcher that uh, looked into the vo uh, into the visual voicemail, and he was able to find that uh, in reality uses the IMAP, if I remember correctly, protocol. And for some carriers, uh, he was able to to launch brute force attacks because. It, the authentication wasn't with the same ping as you get when you dial in, but uh, he found at least one carrier in Australia, I believe, that, uh, that was vulnerable through the uh, voicemail protocol, vi visual voicemail. And I checked for German carriers. I, I did that. I actually followed the steps that he did to see if that, if that was worth uh, mentioning here. I didn't find it to be vulnerable, but that doesn't mean that that's not the case. Thank you. And one more last question. Hi, thank you for the talk. 
Um, what is your recommendation to American carriers to protect themselves against this attack? Uh, I, I, I put a slide, uh, a slide there. Like for me, I guess the most important is really look at what some German carriers are doing. I really like that uh, the recent password is sent it to you over SMS as soon as it detects that someone dialed, uh, tried six times the wrong ping. Uh, I mean, if you have physical access to a locked device, you could claim that if someone has the preview uh, turned on on the device, you could still see the ping, you know, when you get it. So, but then it, will, it wouldn't be like a remote attack anymore. So uh, definitely detect brute force and, 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 and shut down. I mean, we know that with the caller ID, it's not working so well for, uh, for telecom because I was able to bypass it. But I know that uh, because I did some tests with HLR records, that you can actually tell the type of device as it is, if it's a virtual number. So if carriers could actually look at the type of phone that is trying to call in, if it's a virtual number, eh, you know, red flag. If it's not, I don't think someone is going to have, I guess a government could, like, you know, have 3,333 devices because you try one pin for the 10,000 key space, you know, you try three pins at a time and just have 3,333 SIM cards, and so it will come from real devices. But then at least it will quite significantly mitigate it. And then, like, again, like, if you ban DTMF tones from the greedy message, that will help as well. Thank you, Martin. I've never provided any telephone number to any platform, and now, thanks to you, I know <laughs> why. <laughs> Good idea. applause for Martin Weigel, please. Thank you. <laughs>